Hello, welcome to I Be Joking. This video will hopefully be a series on progression or transition between strictly mountain biking over to dirt jumping and indoor bar bike park riding. And so today I'm going to go over some of the lessons that I've learned in the short time that I've been do doing dirt jumping or focused on dirt jumping and some of the, the things that I've built along the way. So a little history about myself. I've been mountain biking for probably 10 years and every year I go with a group of friends to some uh, some downhill mountain bike park and so uh, I've been to Copper Harbor three times. It's a downhill uh, park in Michigan. I've been to Trussell Park in Denver, Colorado twice, um, most recently last year and I have a write-up on that as well and on the cost of flights and all that good stuff. Snowshoe, I've been to Snowshoe twice. Not my favorite place just because they allow hair scrambles and things like that and so it's really beat to death. Uh, if they could clean it up it would be fantastic. Uh, I've been to Black Rock, Oregon. That's a great place. Uh, if you can get a bus to the top because it is a hell of a, a trip riding up the three miles to the top of the mountain to ride. Uh, that was last year so that was a lot of fun. There were a lot of things that were beyond my skill level. Um, to give you some background into my skill set, last year when, when I went to Trussell, done all the tabletops. Um, the only tabletop that ain't quite clear is on Rainmaker. There's a larger tabletop that's a third tabletop in a series. I can't quite get my rear tire over it. Um, I, I bet I will next year. Uh, but anyway, so that's kind of my skill set. The only pier drop that I didn't do at Trussell was the last pier drop off of Be All That You Can Be. In Snowshoe, I did almost everything with the exception of the, the road gap jump. It's not quite comfortable. I came really close this year, or last year, you know, 2017. Just didn't quite do it. I have a 2016 Kona Precept 150. It is a full suspension, as I consider it, uh, an enduro bike, uh, 150 millimeters front and rear. It's actually off being worked on right now. Uh, got another video on that one. It's a, a two-year long-term review. The bike has had a lot of problems. Uh, it's dubbed Weeble Wobble. Um, so anyway, that's that's kind of my skill set. And so this last winter, or this winter. I focused on, I decided I was going to focus on dirt jumping. So basically to better myself on these downhill mountain bike parks. And because a lot of those parks have uh, more slope style kicker uh, ramps onto these large jumps. And so when you're kicking along like a trestle, you're, you're traveling 20, 23 miles an hour sometimes. And when you're kicking along and you hit one of those kickers, it can, it can spook you. Um, so, you know, I was starting to get comfortable, but I didn't feel like I was progressing fast enough. And I felt like just having an annual trip to one of those places just wasn't enough. Um, I felt like eventually I was going to just kind of fizzle out. And I didn't want that to happen. I wanted to really get into it and enjoy it. Um, so anyway, so lessons learned. Things that I've learned, uh, I started really focusing on dirt jumping and indoor parks end of November of, of last year. I went to Mike's three times um, between the end of November and the end of last year. Then I went a couple weeks ago to Ray's Indoor Bike Park in Cleveland. I had been to Ray's um, one other time the year previous um, in Cleveland and then the other one in Milwaukee twice in two separate years. So it's part of that annual um, trip that the guys and I do. So anyway, uh, so a couple weeks ago I went to Ray's and it was kind of a clincher for me. It, I felt like I could really start to progress because before that point I wasn't sure that I was progressing. Um, some things I could do a little bit better, other things I couldn't get through the mind block. And so I went out and I bought a dirt jump bike. Um, I had rented bikes up to that point just to be certain that this was what I was going to get into uh, because you can rent one of those bikes for $20 and 
And so if you start to tally that up, you could rent one of those many, many times before you could purchase you know, a, a bike. But again, with progression, you don't live necessarily close to an indoor park. I live relatively close, 45 minutes each way, um, but it's still not close enough. In order for me to, to really feel like you know, I could get into it and learn more quickly, um, at that point I, I wanted to buy a bike. So, so I bought this Norco, 2017 Norco 125, and it has 100 millimeters of travel on the fork. Uh, kind of step back, my uh, requirements of a dare jump bike, because there's different kinds of builds, was to have a fork. Some of them don't have a fork, uh, or a, a shock um, on the front, hydraulic brakes, and a single speed. Um, you do see a variety of dirt jump bikes which have mechanical brakes sometimes. Some of them have front and rear brakes. Um, I knew from the other rentals that I had I didn't need front brakes. Uh, otherwise, they're pretty standard. You've got a 25-tooth sprocket in the front. You have 10 or 11 in the back. Um, no gears, no derailers. Um, 160 millimeter rotor. The, the, this is a 26 inch dirt jump. Uh, I hear some people will say they like 27 and a half and 29s, but I, uh, I was really comfortable with this because of the rentals. Grips I'm not so particular on. I do like Oiko Rogues. This has a Tektro um, hydraulic brake system, which is okay, it's fine. And it, this is a coil spring versus an air spring, or versus an air shock. Air shocks to me are a little more comfortable because it's what I'm used to. They have a different, a little bit different feeling to them. But once I got used to this, which happened within a few hours of me riding it, uh, felt no difference. It, it, it makes a little bit more noise than an air shock does. In some ways, it has kind of, I wouldn't say a rattle to it, Sometimes when you hit the top end of the fork, but it has a different kind of a clunk sound. Where air shocks, when you hit something, you can hear that kind of a sound. So it's a little different. So those are, were kind of my requirements. Oh, and the chromoly frame. Um, just mostly because the bikes I had rented had chromoly frames. And the way they feel when you land, it has a different feeling than an aluminum bike. This bike, I think, is 27 pounds, so it's still pretty light. Um, but other way, those those were all of my uh, requirements. Otherwise, everything else is pretty standard, hubs and things like that. Um, so on to the lessons learned with getting this bike or a new bike, um, a new dirt jump bike or even a BMX. In this, you have to scrub in the tires. Okay, so on to some lessons that I've learned uh, with my apparel. I learned very quickly to wear pants. With mountain biking, I almost never wear pants. It's always shorts with possibly knee pads depending on where I'm riding. Um, I do 80% of my riding on a cross country trail here locally, which I, I manage that trail and build new features there. Okay, so before I get into some of the lessons I've learned with um, crashing and with this bike, um, I'll talk a little bit about apparel. I wear corduroy point pants, regular fitting. Uh, that's to prevent slide out burns on the plywood and uh, I typically wear a t-shirt. When you first start doing indoor parks, you'll, you'll go in there. If you didn't just wear a jacket and you wore, like, let's say, long sleeves and under, under armor and all that stuff, it gets really hot really quickly. You burn a lot of calories, uh, which was surprising to me at first. Um, so anyway, I wear a t-shirt. I also wear a full-faced helmet. Uh, this one, it, it actually has a removal. It's a switchblade allows me to remove the front if I want to. I don't typically remove it. Um, but I like having, you know, that comfort of if I'm going to land on my face, that this is going to hopefully prevent me from breaking my jaw. And that helmet also has a nice coverage over the back of your, your skull. And so, personal preference. I also typically wear gloves, but the more I ride, the more that I end up not wearing them because I sweat a lot, and so when I sweat, uh, my gloves end up getting, um, sorry, end up moving around, and I end up getting blisters half the time. Without wearing gloves, you have to wipe your hands quite a bit in order to make sure uh, that your hands don't slip off. On to 
the lessons learned of the bike. So I got this bike on Friday, went to Mike's the very following day. Didn't have a chance to put on pedals yet. I should have went ahead and ordered them at the same time, but I wasn't uh, sure what these were going to be like. First quarter pipe that I went up, I slid out, landed right on my side, right on my elbow. Make sure you scrub in your tires. Um, two points actually on the tires. Scrub them in. Uh, the easiest way to scrub in the tires for me is to take 150 grit sandpaper and just lightly scuff the sides um, to make sure you get that oil that's on the tire. Never had to worry about that with mountain bikes because you know you're typically on dirt and you know you're if you do rail into a turn, most of those turns have berms and um, with your, when you're in an indoor park, you don't have any of that stuff. If you have a berm, it's wood, it's plywood, it's slick. Um, so anyway, make sure you scuff in the tires. If you don't have sandpaper, if you forget to sand, you know, use sandpaper, what you want to do is just do some, some slide outs um, on a, a flat piece of plywood when you're at the park. Don't use your brake because um, you want the tire to rotate as you're doing your, your rotation, your, splint, uh, your spin out so that it rubs off that oil off the sides of the tire. Had I done that, I wouldn't have crashed. And um, it was a superficial injury like most of them are. But anyway, and also um, when I was reading through online, most of the experts, they have 60 PSI in their tires. For me, 45 is ideal. Uh, I learned that after the fact, uh, because I, 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 every time I went into a quarter pipe or some painted piece of plywood, I would start to slide, so my comfort level was was pretty low. And so anyway, I, I made those two adjustments, and I was off and running. The other thing you want to make sure, uh, because it's a new bike, is make sure that these are very tight. These are 15 millimeter typically. Um, mine was loose when I crashed. In fact, this back wheel slid to the side and I had to walk the bike back to the uh, to the front of the, the the building to to repair it or put it back in alignment. Make sure that it stays tight. If it's not tight, if you hear a popping sound when you pedal, it's probably because you have the chain too loose. Uh, that's something else that I never had to deal with on a mountain bike because you have the derailleur that keeps everything tight. Uh, so that's something you want to keep keep uh, a close eye on is the chain. One of the other things that um, I did, because I, if you're like me, I bought this and I didn't get the pedals, is I had these plastic factory pedals. When you buy a new bike, they're typically plastic. And so I took a triangular file like this, it's a mini set that I got from Harbor Freight, and I made X's on each one of these plastic pens and even on parts of the pedal. That way I could get the maximum traction. Um, the other thing that I do also wear is I, I wear 510 mid tops. Um, luckily, I didn't even think about this at the time, but it does work out with indoor riding as well because you'll find that you'll have a tendency to bang your ankles off of this crank arm. And most of the crank arms on these style of bikes is steel, it's chromoly steel. And you bang your ankles on there quite a few times, and it really starts to hurt after a while. So, we're mid high tops um, mid to high tops and I wear 510s but you can wear anything with a real sticky sole like skate shoes um, sketchers I think a lot of the times are good for that um, but my preference is our preference is to wear 510s so one of the other things I had done over the last few days is or I think it was two weeks ago actually is I built a portable kicker ramp and I'll link to that in this, the description of this video so that you can build one yourself. It has all of the measurements that you need. It's Blake, uh, based off of a video um, from Blake Samson, if you know him from GMBN, where he, he gives you a pretty good idea on how to build one. Uh, but I thought I would elaborate on a little bit so you didn't have to guess on anything like I had to. So I'm going to show you that real quick. So this is the kicker ramp that I built. The sides are actually plywood sides from the Mike uh, Indoor Bike Park um, that I've been telling you about, where I did some volunteer work. And um, even the angle here actually is from some pieces that they had cut. 
so I think you'll find that this angle is really nice. It's not overly um, aggressive. And the other great thing about this kicker ramp too is not only is it good for you know jumping off of and getting yourself familiar with that compression and getting used to pulling up on the bike, it is great for rolling up onto and rolling backwards because that requires a fair amount of balance. And it's hard to find a place that you can do that, um, at least for me. Um, so anyway, this gives you that opportunity. You can roll up on it and roll backwards, and of course you're, pedal you're pedaling backwards, so that's something a little different to get you used to the balance of the bike. Um, so I highly advise making one of these if, I, if you're seriously interested in, in getting into dirt jumping. One of the, the other things, so on to jumping, some of the things that I really struggled with um, was to change my trajectory to land on the down slope because I'm, I still want to make that slow arc like you typically do in mountain biking. Indoor bike parks and slope style, you're typically going more vertical than you are distance. And so if you're not familiar with that, it's, it's very difficult. It can be difficult to ch change the way you, you think. Um, because it can be frightening. So some of the things that I've learned there is that, and I just recently did this um, on spines, because spines have such a, a, an aggressive um, on and off, because you're basically going straight up and then going straight back down. And that in itself is unnerving. So just as of yesterday, or Saturday, yeah, yesterday, I learned that for me, when I go up those ramps and to launch and get myself in a position where I can reposition the bike to go down the down ramp, I have to pull the bars up to my stomach. And then that, what that does is it puts me in a position to then re, um, readjust to be able to get down that ramp. Because if you don't do that, if you don't get the front end high enough, and you start to try to transition before the back wheel gets off of the ramp, you're going to end up doing this bucking motion and um, it can send you over the bars. I haven't crashed on a, a spine yet, but I have certainly injured myself uh, in the lower region several times just from not doing it correctly. And that's a scary feeling because um, spines for me in particular were pretty frightening just because of the you know the the idea that if you mess up you're dropping from you know five feet onto the ground most likely on your face and it's really not the case spines are super easy uh, my, one of my favorite go-to's is a guy a youtuber Grant Moore if you get an opportunity to check his videos out they've been very helpful for me uh, but pull those bars all the way up to your stomach and once you get off of, and, and you, that's when you get up into the air, you pull the bars right up to your stomach. And for me, that also helped me with uh, preventing from pulling too hard on one side to, of the bars to another, because uh, I also had that tendency uh, coming off of some of the box jumps, is to pull to one side. So when I came down, I always came down, or not always, but I came, had a tendency to come down a little crooked. Um, so when I start, once I started doing that, not once have I had a problem with coming down crooked. And, and it's a really, really cool feeling when you do it the first time. It's a little unnerving because it's new, um, but it really puts you in a, in a much better position, both altitude-wise and position, to land on the downslope. So that's something I've just recently learned. All right, well, hopefully this video has been very helpful for you. Build yourself a mini kicker ramp. Go to the link in my description, and I give it a full write-up with all the measurements that you'll need to build one. It costs less than $40. It takes about two hours, and it's very simple. So build one. And if you get a chance, an opportunity, get yourself a dirt jumper. If not, if you're not sure, do like uh, you know, do the same thing that I had done. Go rent a bike. Try it out. Figure out if you whether or not you're going to be able to 
um, justify buying a bike. If you do, great. If not, you try. Um, either way, it will help you with your mountain biking. Thank you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.